if you guys are curious and thinking about, hey, I need to upgrade my turbos on my RB26 on my Skyline GTR, in today's video, we are gonna do a quick unboxing of the new, the newest HKS GT3 2530 turbos. So if you guys, you know, you were tuning your car, the stock turbos have a ceramic exhaust wheel on the R32s, R33s, and then the R34s, so you have upgraded N1 turbos on those, depending, I think, on which model you have. But if you want to turn your boost up beyond 15 pounds and you don't want to blow your uh, exhaust wheel off your turbo and, you know, potentially damage your car, this is a safe way to do it. So a couple of you guys said that you want to see an unboxing video. So this is the skew here. So HKS GT3 2530. <laughs> So included in the box, instruction manual, you get a brand new set of HKS stainless steel gaskets. You get a like a fiberglass heat shielding that's gonna go off of the back of the turbo elbow. Alright guys, they're open up. Let's check them out to be appropriate and have fun. For my HKS, I've got the HKS lanyard as well as the hat. I bought a bunch of other HKS stuff from Japan that I'll link in the description down below if you guys want to get some HKS goodies. But these look very nice. So these have, um, these are the newest out of the turbos that HKS has developed for the twin turbo sports turbine selection. So you had the originally the GT SS's and then the GTRS. The SS is on the smaller side, so it's going to be good for like low to mid fours on pump gas, maybe 500 wheel if you're running E85. Um, the RS can go much higher, like 550 ish for horsepower, um, but they're going to be leggy and they're slow. Those guys use on the compressor wheel, they are steel or these are billets. So HKS developed these a couple years later, so they got a little bit newer techs. They're gonna be responsive and kind of the good median. So you're gonna get response, but you're gonna get a little bit more on the high-end power. These should easily be able to make 500 wheel on pump and then probably like, I don't know, 550 on uh, E85 would be my guess. But my friend Kevin's car that we drove at Ars Day last year, His car was making 500 wheel, 500 torque with these turbos with a Step Zero HKS stroker kit. So I know they're capable. I've personally driven these turbos in his car and they're freaking fast. They're gonna have more than enough power to ever keep me satisfied. So you got all your crush washers, guys for all your, oh, damn it. I don't know why, but I'm getting like telemarketer calls all the time, like 20 a day where I used to not get any. It freaking drives me crazy. But anyway, guys, all the crush washers come in the package for all the, like your oil lines, your water lines. Um, comes with all the new gaskets as well. So these are for your turbo elbows. These are for your, um, like your compressor, like your charge pipe to the turbos on the top here. So it's nice, it comes with all that stuff in the box. You've got all the different, looks like vacuum line fittings for when you put the vacuum lines onto the wastegate. This looks like that's all in the box. You got your oil drain return lines here. And if you guys are preparing to buy yourself a new set of turbos, I do also have a full turbo removal video showing you step-by-step -step how to take the turbos off your RB26 with the engine still in the car. I'll put a link to that video down below as well as a tag on the top or right of the screen. So the only gasket that it doesn't come with new that you may need to replace is the turbo outlet gasket. 
to the manifold to the turbo. So it doesn't come with those, so you may want to get a set of those. And the only other thing I noticed it doesn't come with is your your turbo, like your locks or whatever. This locks your your nuts on basically. So you may you may need a set of those depending on the condition of what you have. I also have a set of brand new oil drains from the turbo because the ones that I had on the car are like really hard, like in plasticky. So these are pliable, brand new. Come with the um, like insulation wrap on them, very similar to like what HKS supplies in the box. So I think what I'm going to do, let's just finish taking a look at these. So this, the outlets on these are pretty nice. And what I want to do is kind of match, we'll put the hardware in, we'll put a, a brand new exhaust manifold on here. So I got some N1 manifolds, brand new from Nissan, that I picked up from my buddy Shay down at uh, <coughs> Nissan JDM Parts down in Texas. I'll put a link in the description down below. I think I picked these up for like $750 or $730 for the set. I'd say my favorite thing with these new HKS turbos, look at the compressor housing, look at the HKS stamping, it looks freaking awesome. These are old school proven design by HKS. I'm excited to see what they can do. And like I've always said, the turbo is the key. So I'm excited to see what these new HKS 2530s can do as we turn up the boost. couple nuts from our turbos we removed like I was telling you guys before with the lock washers these aren't included but these are important because through all your heat cycles as your turbos heat up and cool off you want to make sure you have these back on your car so I got these all kind of just snug down so you kind of see what it looks like but uh, they do come with uh, hardware in the box which I wasn't paying attention but if you want to use the HKS ones they kind of have a uh, little tapered towards the top um, so yeah, I'll probably put those on there, but I really like the N1 manifolds, OEM manifolds, so much easier to work with. I had the Tomei manifolds, I'll throw some video on the car. Uh, I'll throw some video up from the Tomei manifolds that I took off before with my Spectrum DR500 turbos that uh, failed. In the design of the Tomei's, it was almost impossible to install. You couldn't reach anything and the wrench had to be ground down. The turbos, compressor housing had to be clocked to even tighten the nuts down. And installing and tighten these down, freaking pain in the butt. Here you can easily reach everything, so much easier to work with. The Tomei manifolds did have a little bit bigger outlet. They were matched perfectly to the size of the Nissan gasket here. Then led to the turbos a little smaller anyway, so. But yeah, these all look super nice. I like the HKS in the casting there. You got the wastegate here, internal actuated. I like the exhaust wheel, everything looks like it's really nicely made. I know HKS makes these with um, MHI or Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, so they help them make the turbos. And the center cartridge does have a journal bearing, so it's not as responsive, but unlike ball bearings, they're a little bit more reliable. You can put more abuse on them and stuff, so you won't have to rebuild them quite as frequently from what I've read and I only had like 2,000 miles on my last ball bearing turbos before the front one failed so I was not going to go ball bearing again and originally one thing I want to one thing I want to address with you guys originally I talked about going single turbo which originally I did want to but I've kind of added up how much money I've spent on my car over the last six years with the purchase price of the car and how much you know parts are and all the stuff that goes wrong, you know, the GTR tax. Um, I've got like 80 grand into the car. Um, actually probably more because all the other little parts that you buy, that you, there's really no way to track that stuff. So. One thing we'll be replacing is the stock turbo elbow. So I've got some Tomei cast ones coming out that have, I think they're like 67 millimeter output versus these are 60. And these are very restrictive inside. So I don't wanna have any horsepower loss. Those are gonna be coming from Blackhawk Japan. I believe the end of this month, I'll throw a link in the description for the ones that I, that I ordered. 
But yeah, you can see see how like hard these old turbo drains were. So these new ones are going to be nice. And the oil water feed system is different on these. I'll go over all that in depth when I install them onto my engine once I get it back from the machine shop. And let's see, like these little these little brackets and stuff. Just a little bit different. But I just love the machining on the OEM ones. You actually have a little bit of room to slide these left to right when they're installed on the car because they're kind of oval, like oval here. So you've got a little bit more play and manipulation for installation, which I like, and just manly. Like they're just nice. Like look at the way the yoke fits in here and like your hardware and everything. These are just nicer. So I'm gonna get these probably powder coated just for heat management. I've got some other stuff I gotta get powder coated as well. Or these are, actually I'm gonna have these ceramic coated. But yeah, these have all the banjo bolts, everything you need, all included, all the studs. Yeah, this would be pretty simple install. And these are nice studs too. These are like that carbon hardened steel too. So they're not just cheap stainless. They won't, you know, rust and corrode and break with all the heat from the turbos. I love the way, the way these uh, wastegate actuators look. These are freaking cool. That uh, turbine, look at that compressor in there. You can see how you can take apart the center cartridge. There's just like a, uh, a V-band on here. So you can take that off if you needed a uh, rebuild, send them back off to HKS, probably HKS USA, I would imagine down in Arizona. And speaking of Arizona, one of the other reasons that I'm gonna sell my GTR is I'm gonna probably move to Arizona summer of 2024 I'm gonna sell this house my wife and I are gonna move down there and I want to just have pretty much as much I want to be as debt free as possible I want to be able to live comfortably I want to only have to work part-time I don't want to have to have a full-time job I can focus on the channel I can focus on content and just enjoy living my life and this is gonna help me get there because I'll be able to finish paying off my WRX, I can pay off my wife's car and I'll still have money left. So, yep, that's the, uh, the vision, that's the goal. Um, yeah, I want to, uh, I just want to have time. I'm tired of working all the time. I want to be able to go to the track more. I want to be able to go to events. If there's a car show, go to the car show, be able to make content, film that stuff, spend time with the family and just, you know, enjoy life. I've put uh, almost 12 years into corrections so I have like 13 and a half. I'll have my pension and stuff from there that I can collect at 58. So I just got to kind of make it till I'm 58. I can do that. It's only like another, I'm going to be 41. So like I'll have to work for like about 16 more years until I can retire. I think I'm going to take this old block in and just have the cylinder bores cleaned out. And then I can practice engine assembly with the old crankshaft, old pistons, connecting rods. Just going through like the whole engine assembly process, even though I'll never use it. It just, I think it'd be something that would be beneficial to me to learn how to do and to like, get comfortable setting piston rings and putting pistons in the block and tightening everything back down. I think that'd be kind of fun. I hope you guys enjoy the up close detail. I always do the best I can to try to capture the detail just as clear as what I'm seeing in person for you guys on the video on the other end. I hope you guys like that. Leave me a comment and let me know if you do. I think the craftsmanship on these are unreal. I think reliability and long-term ownership with these turbos on the car should make it a dynamic package for just being able to enjoy it, not have something that's gonna break, fail. And it's HKS, as everybody knows, HKS is pretty much some of the best parts you can buy from Japan. As far as cost on these, the retail on these is around 3,800 bucks with the, U the US to Japanese exchange rate I was able to get them for like 2400 which was pretty cheap and I think they're still around twenty seven hundred dollars if you order them directly from Japan you have to pay shipping which I think is like hundred and fifty dollars maybe more depending on where you live in the US you also have to pay customs 
So you have to pay 2%, I think it was around 2%, maybe 2.5% to bring these into the US. So just keep that in mind. I think it was like another $100 that I had to pay to FedEx with the fees and stuff. So that's all associated into the cost, but it's still cheaper than buying it locally from a shop if you don't mind importing it yourself. So I have a link in the description down below for Blackhawk of where I got these. These are cool too, I didn't notice that, these little stoppers on there. Well guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hit the thumbs up if you like and subscribe. I'll have a lot more content coming. The engine's off at the machine shop, so once we get that back, um, we'll start assembling some things. I also gotta go drop the head off at the head shop and get that all inspected and get the V-cam and everything cleaned out, put back together and we'll get this project going.